Hey everyone, Miss Gibbs here. Today we are going to make collages inspired by Mondrian. But first, I want to talk about squares and rectangles because those are the shapes that Mondrian used in much of his artwork. So let's make sure we know our squares and rectangles. The squares and rectangles both have four sides. Squares have equal sides, and rectangles have two sides that are equal. Now, is that a square or a rectangle? Or how about that? Or that, that has three sides. Mm-mm, nope. So, square, rectangle, 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 and another rectangle. The other shapes? Those aren't rectangles. We want to be using squares and rectangles. So the first step is to cut some construction paper into squares and rectangles. We'll be using red, blue, and yellow. And with your scissors, you are just going to cut some different size shapes of the squares and rectangles. So let's see, are all of those squares and rectangles? What about that? Is that a square or a rectangle? Nope, that's a circle. Let's sort through the shapes that I've cut so far to make sure that we have squares or rectangles and that we are only cutting in straight lines. Let's see. Yep, those all look good. What about that? Those are straight lines, but nope, that's a triangle. It only has three sides. So we're not going to use that for this project. That's a triangle and another rectangle on the left. And once we've finished cutting all of our pieces, we will probably put them into a baggie and use them for next class, depending on where we are in our project. So it will have your name on it. And be sure to throw away any of your garbage. Next, we are going to use the squares and rectangles that we cut out in the red, yellow, and blue construction paper. And we're going to glue them onto our paper. Well, we want to group the pieces into blocks of the same color when we do this collage. So what I'm doing here is I'm just laying out the pieces to see where I want to place them to get an idea before I put the glue down. I'm gonna make sure that I spread the colors out. And that looks good. I have an idea now of where I'm gonna place these, so I'm ready to glue. And I can just put the glue directly on the paper and press down to glue my piece down. That is a lot more efficient than trying to put it on the paper and then gluing the paper down. Remember, we want our pieces of our collage to overlap. That means that the edges are crossing over each other. And of course, your glue is going to be white. Mine is blue because I added some dye to it so that you can see exactly where I'm putting my glue. I'm spreading out the colors as I glue. And when I put the colors down, I also wanna make sure that I do leave some white space in between. And you'll see that when I'm done gluing.
For the next part of our project, we are going to stamp. And this is how we stamp something. I'm using cardboard here. We're going to put the edge in some black tempera paint. And we're just going to press down and lift up. That's called a stamp. And we press down and lift up. We can even make that line a little bit longer. Press down, lift up. Oh, but we don't want to press it and then drag it to the side. That's going to leave a smear. That's like painting. So no, we don't want to do that. I'm going to just press it down and lift it right up. Yep, don't want to press it down and drag it. But it is okay for our lines to cross over each other like that. That works just fine. What we don't want is for them to be smeared all over the place. Now that we've practiced stamping a bit, we're going to stamp directly onto our project to get some black lines. Using exactly the same technique, we're going to put the cardboard in the black tempera paint, press down, lift up, press down, lift up, and go right to the edge of the paper. And you can see there, I messed up. So I would recommend make sure you hold the corner of your paper down because my paint actually, it stuck when I pressed down and it caused its own smear. So make sure you hold the paper down when you are stamping so that you don't end up smearing like I did. But if you do make a mistake, that's okay. So you may even be able to get two or three stamps um, before you need to recharge that stamper with some paint. So what I'm doing here is deciding where I want to put my next stamped straight line. 